Hello, welcome to Saints Live. I'm Kenzie Benali. And I'm Steve Forbes. And it's been another short turnaround for the Saints. They've made the trip to Old Trafford just three days after facing Aston Villa here at St Mary's Stadium. You can see the current scenes uh, at Old Trafford at the moment. Uh, the players arriving shortly, we're told. And as always, we've got another bumper show for you all. We'll be discussing team news shortly. Uh, we'll also be talking all things deadline day. And of course, we'll be previewing today match against Manchester United and to do all of that we have two fantastic guests we're certainly in very good company because Dean Hammond and Paul Belveston are with us uh, welcome gents Dean it feels like we've just said goodbye yeah uh, the games are coming thick and fast at the minute how are you I'm very well thank you Kenzie very well uh, yeah it is lots of games at the moment um, and a good chance for Southampton to, to bounce back straight away from the, an unfortunate defeat um, against Aston Villa yeah, absolutely. And Belle, it was great to have you with us once again. Uh, last time I saw you, I was feeling rather smug. You were out in the rain. I was in the warm with the umbrella up, doing a bit of reporting. Nice to be in the in the warm tonight then. <laughs> absolutely. I thought that was the coldest I'd been. And then I went to Arsenal Man United at the weekend and that was Arctic. So, no, <laughs> delighted to be here today. Thank you. <laughs> It's great to have you both along with us. Definitely. Right, let's dive straight into it, chaps. So um, in terms of the team news, we're unsure of the fitness of Oriol Romeu, of Ibrahima Diallo and Theo Walker after they all came off against Aston Villa. Uh, we aren't expecting any more players to return from injury and Takumi Minamino isn't available for the game after he joined on loan last night. Uh, so, Dean, with both Oriol and Ibrahima missing, that's going to cause a bit of a headache in the centre of the park. What are you expecting to see tonight? Well, you're right, Steve. It's a bit of a, it's well, it's an interesting dilemma, really, um, because it doesn't only affect the centre and midfield. It's gonna, it's gonna affect the right back position as well. Obviously, with James Ward Prowse playing there against Aston Villa, um, with the players potentially being injured um, and not being available, um, it could be an opportunity for for some young younger players to come in. Um, Alex uh, Jankovic potentially could get an opportunity. Um, played in the FA Cup game against Shrewsbury came on against Aston Villa, so there could be an opportunity there. Stuart Armstrong, I potentially could drop back into that position, but do you want to restrict him and, and oh, you want him to remain creative on the wings? Um, and obviously, James Ward-Prowse coming back into the centre midfield would be in his natural position. So it's difficult. And then who plays right back? Um, so, yeah, it's such an important part of the field. It's such a vital part of the team. It's one of Manchester United's strengths as well, with Paul Pogba in there and Fernandes in there. Um, and then the right back position, you've got uh, Rashford playing playing left wing for Manchester United. So I think it's going to be a, a reshuffle. Obviously, I personally would get James Ward Prowse back in there, take him back from the right back position, and bring him back to the centre of the of the pitch where he can control it, he can dictate from that position, um, and probably. Um, Alex Jankovic will get an opportunity. Um, I've watched some clips of him. He looks comfortable on the ball. Um, he comes with a good reputation from from the through the academy. Um, he he looks like a player that is a forward thinking player. Um, and this is what happens with when there's injuries, when there's suspensions. Young players get the opportunity, and it could be the making of him. So yeah, it's a really interesting dilemma for for the manager. Yeah, and Theo Walcott potentially missing as well. Paul, how do you expect Saints to line up tonight? It's so tricky. I've, I've scribbled down potential lineups since first thing this morning and I, I still haven't got one that I think's well, anything that would be happy, uh, make Saints fans happy, really. I, I totally agree with Dean. I think we'll, we'll definitely see a youngster uh, having a big impact today from the start, whether that's Alex Jankovic, who uh, he's only played a handful of minutes for the first team, really. So that would be a big Premier League debut at Old Trafford. Kane Ramsey has well been uh, mentioned a little bit because he's been on the bench for so many games in a row. He's only played the one game in the Premier League before now as well. But that again, that was a big one. That was away at Manchester City, if I remember, and uh, one of Ralph Hasnoodle's first games. So he's certainly a manager who's, who's not afraid to chuck in the youngsters into big games. He has full faith in them. He's made sure that they'll be training with the first team for a long time. I agree with the idea of moving James Ward-Prowse back into the middle. I think they, the team loses so much when he is out on the on the right-hand side of defence, as he did a couple of times last season. He's so key to this team that I certainly think I'd move him back in the middle. The problem, of course, is that other players who've, who've filled in there recently, Diallo looks like he's out injured, Musa Gineppo maybe, that's not ideal, especially as they're likely to be up against... Um, 
Well, a, a left winger who, who tends to cut inside, but then also Luke Shaw, who's one of their form players at the moment, bombing on the outside. So whoever is playing right back has to be switched on for the full 90 minutes and really playing out of their skin. So, yeah, I'm very intrigued to see what sort of lineup um, uh, is named tonight. I think there will be some youth in there. Yeah, we're very intrigued as well. And of course, we will be bringing you that team news in just under 10 minutes time. Uh, but before then, Dean, let's talk about Nathan Redmond, because we all expected him uh, to play on the wing against Aston Villa. And of course, he partnered Danny Ings up front. How did that partnership work for you? And do you do you like that? Or would you prefer to see him play alongside Shea Adams or perhaps Theo Walcott if he is fit? Well, I think it, it worked okay. I don't think it was too effective, if I'm honest. Uh, I prefer Nathan on the wing. Um, I think he's more comfortable there. Um, and I prefer Shea Adams playing up front with Danny Ings. I know Shea's uh, form has dropped a little bit and that potentially could do with a bit of fatigue. But he looked he looked sharp when he came on against Aston Villa. And I like Shea because he offers you something different. He's a physical presence, but also he makes them penetrating runs in behind. He's a willing runner. He works very hard for the team. And I think when him and Danny play together, the combination is better. I think when they're at their best, that's when the Southampton have that real threat, that real creativity. They look like they enjoy playing together. They've got a relationship. So I think Nathan playing wide left, you know, he, him and Ryan's um, partnership and relationship is very, very good as well. They have a good understanding. So personally, I would bring Shea back into the team. I would like to see him up front because... He's a nuisance, Shay, and he's, he does all different types of things. He's a really, really good all-round player, and I think he makes Danny Ings a better player. I think we've seen that. When they play together, Danny is more comfortable and is more effective. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I play Nathan wide because I really like Nathan, um, but I'd bring Shay back into the team personally. Right, well, the last time Saints did make a trip to Old Trafford, there was a bit of late drama, to say the least, so let's check it out. <laughs> Well, Prash, loose touch, now they're in trouble. Oh, it's a mistake from the skipper. It should be 1-0. Great save, Alex McCarthy, to stop Anthony Martial. Through on goal, one-on-one. -on -one. For all money, the Frenchman looked like he was going to score. And now they're giving it away, United. Now Saints can pounce. Redmond in the box on the left. Chips it to the back post. Surely it's 1-0, it is. And Stuart Armstrong chests it down and half volleys it past David De Gea. A mistake in midfield, possibly by Paul Pogba, has given Southampton the lead at Manchester United. As I say that, Luke Shaw burst past the 1-2 from Marshall. Lovely ball to Rashford. 1-1, but the flag goes up early. Rashford's offside. Jean Massielli says that is... Not going to count. Crossing from the right. Shouldn't have got as far as Martial. It did. Tries to turn. Rashford to his left. 1-1. One, one. And again, that was avoidable from Southampton. United shift it over halfway through Pogba and Fernandes and out to the left wing. And here's Martial onto his right foot with pace and he smashes it past McCarthy. And suddenly Manchester United have come to life and come back from a goal behind to lead. Plays it down the left for Marshall. This is dangerous. Pulls it back. Oh, and it should have been a brilliant goal. How did they not score? Jeez, Here's a man. corner from Ward Prass. Whipped into the danger area and Southampton have equalised. And it's Michael Obafemi who specialises in away goals. He scored the substitute. It was a wicked corner from James Ward Prass. That's it. And that's it. Full time. Manchester United 2, Southampton 2. Oh, got to love a little bit of uh, late drama there. Uh, now, Dean, the first goal was great hustling by Danny Ings. We know United's attack is a real threat, but are they a little bit shaky and vulnerable defensively? I think they're vulnerable, definitely. I think it's the weakest part of their team, um, especially at home as well, um, because the attacking players are more advanced and more expansive, so there's not as much protection for them. Um, I think, especially at home against the, the so-called smaller teams as well, I think there's a little bit less urgency in their defending. You saw that with Sheffield United's second goal. Um, you know, there was three or four passes that players were free in the box. There was no real desire to, to get out to the ball, to close the ball down. Um, so, yeah, I think they are a little bit vulnerable. They take a few risks um, when the fullbacks push really, really high and support the attacking players. There is that... Um, opportunity to run in behind to make them penetrating runs in behind, which I mentioned about Shea Adams. There's areas that the fullbacks leave when they attack. Um, yeah, I just don't think they're they're quite as enthusiastic without the ball, Manchester United. I don't think it's their biggest strength, and because they, the, the back four doesn't get as much protection at home with with Pogba playing, with Fernandez playing, Matic has not quite got the legs he used to have. 
there is opportunities against them and you will get opportunities. On the flip side, uh, their attacking players are fantastic um, and world-class players. So it's a balancing act. But yeah, I would say they are. there is some vulnerability in that Manchester United defence. Yeah, well, Saints suffered a bit of late heartbreak back in the reverse fixture in November when Cavani got a 90th minute winner. But Paul, I'm sure Saints will be able to take confidence from that game, having gone toe-to-toe with the Red Devils. Absolutely, especially the first half performance. There was so much energy in it. There was power. They controlled the game. I was at that game and so very impressed. And, you know, United at that time, there, there were all these talks about how the manager, the fans wanted him replaced, all that sort of thing. And, and, and Saints were dominant. And then second half, things all flipped. Bruno Fernandes suddenly took control of the game and, and Edinson Cavani came on. And I think that's... Uh, that's a big thing, isn't it? United showing the, their squad depth that day. Cavani, a player who's, who's won, I think he was runner-up in the Champions League. He's won countless French titles, uh, Copa America as well. And um, him coming off the bench with all of his uh, experience, class and, and talent, it, it, it transformed the game. Um, he, was, he was sloppy. I was at the Arsenal game this week and, uh, and hopefully he has another night like he did there. But you got to feel for Jan Bednarek as well, haven't you? Because uh, he scored in that game. It was the third Premier League game he scored in. In each one, they've gone 2-0 up and lost 3-2. So, yeah, if, um, if he scores again today, run. Run and hide, I think. <laughs> but, um, I don't think it's just that performance against United either. You know, against Liverpool, winning at St Mary's, the performance at Chelsea as well. All of these uh, performances against the very biggest clubs should be fueling that confidence, even though they have got uh, problems with injuries and things. And I think, you know, having mentioned the strength in depth on the United bench that day, contrast that with our expected bench today because of all the injuries, you know, it's no contest. But they have upset the odds so many times, this Southampton team. And uh, yeah, I'm absolutely not ruling out that again today. Belvis, you just mentioned that near post header against United in November from Bednarek. Uh, Southampton have scored 10 goals from set pieces this season and only West Ham have scored more. Dean, just how important have those goals been this season? Yeah, huge. And they're, they're still a huge part of football. I think it gets lost and it's not as noticeable because it's not as as sexy to score from a set piece anymore. But they're, they're so important to, to winning games and probably taking it from the point of either drawing a game or winning a game. And with James Ward-Prowse's delivery, um, it's fantastic. As, as a player, if you can get your run right, if you can get your movement right and your timing right, you're going to get every opportunity to score because James will put the ball into the area that he's supposed to. And tonight, if you're considering Manchester United, I don't think De Gea really likes that ball. You know, we looked at Bednarek's goal. It's just under the crossbar where he's got to come and compete it with bodies around him. I don't think he's a dominant presence that wants to do that. Except for Maguire, I don't think Manchester United have got a dominant presence that wants to come and head of the ball and attack the ball. So they could be really, really important tonight where Manchester United are going to have a lot of possession. They're going to have a lot of the ball. They're going to create a lot of things. But if Southampton can get into the United territory, um, get them set pieces, they could be a big weapon tonight and they could be important like they have been all season. Yeah, I happen to find set pieces very sexy, uh, Dean, just to let you know. <laughs> um, we, we, on that, we have spoken about the importance of James Ward-Prowse at set pieces, and especially in a game like this where chances might be limited. Uh, Paul, um, oh, excuse me. how good is it to have a solid set piece taker like Prowse in the team? I just think it's invaluable. Like, like Dean said, they're so important set pieces and... Yeah, OK, no one dreams of uh, of their team scoring only set pieces and things. But, it, uh, you know, in a tight game where there are a few chances, they can be invaluable in that respect. But also any game, because the idea that you're up against James Allprouse and how, how dangerous he can be from anywhere in your own half, really, as an opponent, because obviously they don't want to be giving away fouls around the box and he can he can score directly as he did in against United at St Mary's it's always in the back of defenders minds surely because again even further out they don't want to give away any fouls in their own half at all because he's so good at picking out one of his teammates from anywhere on the pitch and that that's one of the things that I think is is really remarkable about Prowse is the fact that it doesn't matter it doesn't seem to matter what angle he's delivering it the ball from he can always pick out 
either a top corner, a bottom corner, a teammate, whatever it is, is so, so accurate. And I mean, I, I've wondered for a long time about how much extra work he must put into it in training. I've been staggered this week. I asked two Belvis, different... I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to jump in. Um, we could talk all day long about James Will Prowse, couldn't we? But we have just got the team news. I'm so sorry to cut you off. Um, we will come back to you. Totally understand. But let's have a little look at this team news uh, because we were wondering what on earth was going to happen. Uh, well, we can tell you that Alex Jankovic makes his full first team debut. Uh, Kane Ramsey starts at fullback and James Ward Prowse moves back into midfield so let's just run through that Saints team in full then in goal Alex McCarthy making up the Southampton back line Kane Ramsey makes just his second Premier League start for the Saints he's alongside Jack Stevens and Jan Bednarek as you'd expect and then Ryan Bertrand completes the black the back four. Ralph Hans, 19-year-old Alex Jankovic, his first Premier League start. As we say, the Swiss youngster lines up against our captain, James Ward-Prowse in midfield. Out wide, Stuart Armstrong and Musa Gineppo. And leading the line is Danny Ings and Shay Adams. Uh, the Saints substitutes for you then. Fraser Forster, Harry Lewis, Alan Shapshet, Ryan Finnegan, Caleb Watts, Kegs Chalke, Will Ferry, Nathan, Nathan Redmond and Dan and Lundaloo. So um, let's come back to you, Belvis. I apologise for cutting you off, but uh, this was much <laughs> anticipated sure. team news. That's my fault. Um, I got them going on sexy set pieces. Oh, and it stuff. was all your <laughs> fault, Steve. <laughs> um, I think mean, that's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's, let's blame Dean. Um, but Belvis, talking about that team news then, we weren't quite sure what was going to happen, but it looks like it could be a big night for the youngsters this evening. Absolutely. And I think Ralph threw us a little bit last time out by uh, by shifting people around a bit today it looks much more like sort of round pegs in round holes with uh, uh, an actual right back playing right back in Kane Ramsey it, it is a surprise I uh, I mentioned him earlier but I didn't really think that he'd be chosen because of the way Ralph had filled that position in the last couple of games playing midfielders back there but um, but yeah delighted for him that he gets another chance in the Premier League and I'm very excited by Alex Jankovic's chance. I think, uh, you know, he's only just turned 19. There's, there's a lot of hype about him. Perhaps not huge, loud hype, but quiet hype, if that's a, a possible thing. So, yeah, very excited to see how he does. And, uh, yeah, Musa Gineppo back in action. I think it, it looks more balanced than perhaps it did last time out. Um, it does look a very young bench. Are there two goalkeepers on the bench as well? That I think that highlights the... Um, the injury problems at the moment but no I, th I think that's a, a first 11 that can cause United problems. Yeah Dean Belvis put it perfectly there it does just seem like a bit more of a balanced side doesn't it and it's good to have Prousey back in midfield and, and give these youngsters a chance tonight. It does and I think that's right I think that the balance is much much better and that helps with a younger player coming into to the team to be able to play in your natural position is, a, is, is, is the best way to come into uh, making your debut or coming into the team after um, or getting your opportunity, really. So, no, I like the team. I like the attacking threat, you know, in Stuart Armstrong. Gineppo, the manager, seems to trust him and really like him. If he's fit, he wants to give him them opportunities. He does produce that magic um, on occasions and he may need that tonight. When Southampton don't have a lot of the ball, he may get an opportunity to to run at the back four and and Shay and Danny Ings up front are always a threat. You know, wh whatever team you're playing against, if them two are on form and they're playing well together, I think there's every chance that Hampton can score. So it's a good chance for the younger players. No bigger test than, you know, coming into a, a Southampton team, playing away at, at Old Trafford against Manchester United, against a really, really good team, Manchester United. And, you know, we see the calibre of the players today. And um, by all accounts, they're both talented players with... Um, you know, with good reputation. So it'd be great for them. And, you know, they'll probably bring some energy to the team. They'll bring some excitement. They'll bring some enthusiasm. And, and that could really, really help the older players as well, you know, because the older players will realise that they'll need to take a little bit more responsibility as well. So it's good. I like what the manager's done. Um, and, you know, the manager obviously trusts the younger players. He said that before. And here's their opportunity. Yeah, big opportunity for them. And, and by the looks of things, the fans are delighted to see them being given a chance. Uh, lots of you feeling very optimistic indeed. Uh, Nicholas, hello to you. He's on Facebook. Uh, he says, Jankovic is time to shine. Uh, Dean, thanks for this one. He says, let's have a good positive attitude tonight, boys. Saints forever. Uh, Chris Lane has got in touch and he says, Ramsey and Jankovic need to show that they're Premier League quality tonight. Uh, and another comment for now from David. Thanks for this. He's on YouTube. 
move. He says, attack, attack, attack. No need to defend. Mentality has to be, we're just going to score one more than you. Uh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Um, we should probably touch on transfers for a little <laughs> bit. Um, it was the close of the January window yesterday and there was a bit of deadline day drama uh, as Southampton let two players go out on loan and bring another in on loan. Paul, let's start with uh, Takumi Minamino. Did I say that right? Takumi Minamino? He's highly thought of. Um, what kind of qualities do you think he's going to bring to the Saints team? I think this is a very good piece of business. I think we haven't seen... Uh, his best form by any stretch at Liverpool so far. He's been there for 12, 13 months. He's very highly rated, though, and he is used to the the system that Southampton play, the high-intensity, high-pressing system, because he came through at uh, Red Bull Salzburg, which is, of course, the sister club to where Ralph did so well at Leipzig. So he can... And he's versatile as well. He can play in any of the front four positions. So particularly if Theo Walcott is uh, looking like he's going to be on the sidelines for any length of time, I think he adds an excellent new option there. Um, I've always been surprised that he hasn't had more opportunities, that we've seen him so rarely in the Premier League so far. Back in the the close season, I did toy with the idea of putting him in a fantasy team. I thought he would be coming in and having having a go at Liverpool. He started the route last time out when they... When they won at Crystal Palace seven nil, he scored that first goal after just a couple of minutes, and uh, and he's shown flashes, but certainly not the consistency that that obviously Jurgen Klopp has been demanding. But the Liverpool manager did only say a couple of a few days ago that he's really beginning to make big strides. He's now getting used to the intensity and energy levels and everything that's demanded from football here in England. It's it's a surprise in a lot of ways that they. They have decided to to let him out on loan, but I think it's interesting. There is, by all accounts, no option to turn the loan into a permanent deal and no automatic option, which shows that they do want him back. They do see him as an important player for the future. Jurgen Klopp also said that, you know, it just seemed too good an opportunity to turn down, to let him go to a club as good as Southampton, where he can play regularly and, and further his development. So I think Southampton fans should be excited by this deal. Yeah, we're very much looking forward to seeing what he brings to this side. Um, Dean, another bit of business then. Jan Valery joined Birmingham on loan last night. Do you think that's a good move for him? I think it's really clever by Southampton, if I'm honest. If, if you look at it, I think they're, they're sending him to a club like Birmingham to, to further his development because one of, obviously, the strength of, of Valery is his, ta- his attacking ability. But it's one of his weaknesses where he needs to improve is his defending. Now, Birmingham are in a relegation battle. So if he's playing at Birmingham, he's going to have to defend. He's going to have to to learn that side of his game. And to play consistent football from now until the end of the season in the championship will be fantastic for his development. He'll learn all different traits. Um, He'll have to learn to be more aggressive because the championship is very, very different to the Premier League. Um, So, yeah, I think it's, it's good for him. He's a player that's, I think he's 21, 22 years of age now. He's played... 36 appearances, I think, he's had for the football club, which is not too bad at his age, really. Um, He's still developing. He's still progressing through his career. So I think a a spell away from the club to maybe for him to appreciate what he's got at Southampton may work for him and it may work for Southampton. So I think it's a clever bit of business by by the club. And I think it could really help his development. Mm. And lastly, Shane Long went to Bournemouth on loan as well. He's been a great servant to Saints over the last six and a half years, but clearly opportunities were just lacking for him this season. How do you assess that move, Paul, for all parties involved? I think Bournemouth have got themselves an excellent professional, someone who'll be reliable, never never let them down, really works very, very hard. He, he isn't the most prolific striker, but he does so much for his teammates all of the the players in the squad up that end of the pitch were going to benefit from his experience and work rate. I think he had some fantastic moments for Southampton. Never seemed to go on a huge run of uh, of consistent appearances in a row, but um, but always reliable when he came into the starting eleven or off the bench. And he he really did score some some crucial goals, uh, some record breaking goals as well. That that fastest one ever in the Premier League against Watford springs to mind. He also did well against Villa in that game where Sadio Mane uh, took the took all the attention by scoring the fastest ever hat-trick. But, yeah, so many, so many moments. You could list them uh, very, very comfortably. But it was clear that even though he signed that new contract reasonably recently, he had slipped down the pecking order in uh, a little while because um, Ralph 
has so much faith and trust in in youngsters like Dan and Lundaloo. So um, I think it makes sense for Southampton and certainly makes sense for Bournemouth. I think they'll um, they'll do very well out of him for the next few months. Yeah, and of course, we wish Shane and Jan all the very best of luck uh, at their respective clubs. Um, back to tonight, though, and of course, the chat on social uh, is all very positive. Uh, lots of comments coming in to us. Um, here's one here from David. He says, we've got nothing to lose tonight. Throw everything at them and just see what happens. Uh, yeah, love that one. Uh, JB on YouTube, he says, Luke Shaw and Rashford did impress me against Liverpool, but Southampton will cause problems. Uh, Ethan's going for a 2-1 win to the Saints tonight. He thinks it will be Shay and James Ward-Prowse with the goals. Uh, and Daisy has left us this comment. Thank you. She says, come on, Saints. Hopefully, youngsters can prove themselves. Let's be positive and attack. And actually, I've got to read this one here from Adam. He says, if Prowsey lands a sexy free kick, we'll be fine. And a little <laughs> winky face. <laughs> Can't wait for that one. Right, before we turn our focus uh, back to tonight's game, let's take a trip down memory lane back to January 2016, where a late Charlie Austin header took all three points for the Saints at Old Trafford. They've only lost one game here at Old Trafford in the Premier League all season. Out to Lingard on the right wing, approaching the Saints' penalty. Onto his left foot, he'll have the shot, it deflected, and it went off a Saints' boot in the end, or doesn't. It went off a United boot. And Jan Azai scored against Saints, of course, in the 21s. And Austin tries to take it round the back of Blind. He drives Blind towards the byline, holds him off with a strong shoulder, backs off from two of them, and he's fouled, he's done well. He's won a free kick, which is effectively a corner, and Blind says to Yanazai, what are you doing diving in there? Ward-Prowse, yard in from the touch, two yards from the corner flag. Here it comes. Ward-Prowse whips it to the heart of the box. Free header, and Southampton have the lead late, and on his debut, off the bench, Charlie Austin scores for Southampton and celebrates with his teammates and the Saints fans travelling away to my right at Old Trafford. The Saints can counter-attack here because the long ball from target found Shane Long. His cushioned header was excellent for Charlie Austin, who's driving towards goal, finds Shane Long with a return ball. Long's got too much pace, has he, in the box? He's just held up. Might fall for target, shot! Deflected Romeo's shot in the end, it was. Good save from De Gea. Support by McNair, it's got to come into the penalty area. It's lifted in by the Northern Irishman. Rooney at the back post, can't win the header. It's still down for Yanazo, drills it just wide of the left-hand post. Oh, that was close. Mike Jones looks at his whistle, looks at his watch, puts a whistle to his mouth, and Southampton have back-to-back -back league wins at Old Trafford. Human kind of summed it up there, didn't it? Uh, what a game. Uh, Dean, you never played against Charlie Austin uh, in the same team, but you came up against him a few times, and unfortunately he did seem to have a bit of a frustrating knack of scoring against Southampton. Uh, what was he like as, as a player, and what have you made of his career? Yeah, I played against Charlie um, obviously a few times when I was at Southampton, he was at Swindon, um, but just a, a really, really good goal scorer. Pretty intense on the pitch, always had a, a lot to say for himself, um, nice and aggressive. Uh, but I think he's had, a, he's had a fantastic career. You know, he's come from non-league, he's worked his way up, he's played for some good clubs, you know, Swindon, QPR, Burnley, Southampton, West Brom. I think, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's played for England or he's been within the England squads, same sort of time that Jamie Vardy came through at that point. Um, so he's had a fantastic career, he really has. And one thing I like about Charlie, I think, he appreciates that he's a footballer. He enjoys being a footballer. He wants to play football. And I think that's why he's gone back to QPR now. I watched the game against Watford um, it was last night or the night before and he scored and he did an interview afterwards and they were asking about how he, his time at QPR was, how he was feeling, uh, why he made the move back. And he was just like, he wanted his purpose back. He wanted to find his purpose back in football. He missed being... Um, a part of the team. He missed playing. He missed scoring goals. And I think that just sums him up. He wants to be a footballer. He wants to continue playing. Um, so, yeah, I think he's had a fantastic career. He really has. And someone that scores important goals. And unfortunately, uh, every time I played against, he, he seemed to score as well. So, But he's a good guy as well. But yeah, yeah, pretty intense on the pitch. Yeah, definitely an important goal there. Scoring on his debut as well. Some fairy tale stuff there, Paul. And a real sign of Southampton's quality at the time. Oh, it was a wonderful team, wasn't it, under Ronald Koeman? And, uh, well, I tell you what, strap yourselves in. Showbiz anecdote coming up because <laughs> when he was down here, me and Charlie Austin shared a dentist. We both were clients <laughs> of Hampshire Dentists Below Bar. There is a reason for, for this because um, I remember he, uh, he said a little while after that 
debut goal that he was a doubt for that game because he was suffering with toothache. But he didn't really want to tell anyone because he thought, I don't want to miss out on A, make him a debut, B, it being at Old Trafford, and C, looking like a bit of a wimp saying I can't play because <laughs> I've got toothache. So he took a few uh, tablets from the physio before he went out there. Um, it was it six or seven minutes after coming on, scored that goal. And yeah, what a what a debut. Fantastic. And uh, it was a tremendous team. Of course, James Ward-Prowse with the... Uh, the ball in. We were talking about his set pieces earlier until I was rudely interrupted. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, back then, that was back-to-back wins at Old Trafford as well, which was, you know, the first time in goodness knows how many decades. So, uh, yeah, it was a great team to watch. It was a lovely moment. And, uh, yeah, hopefully there are signs that uh, that this team can emulate those Kuman years of finishing top half of the table, pushing up sort of top six-ish. I don't know if I can one-up you there, Belvers, but James Ward Prowse and I actually share the same barber. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know if you've seen my barnet, but I don't know if that's a criticism on Prowse or myself. I thought you were going to take credit for the sexy free kicks then. No. Um, <laughs> don't go there. Um, we're looking back at another match against Manchester United. Today is actually Richard Chaplow's 36th birthday, so a perfect excuse to look back at his goal against Manchester United in the FA Cup. We have spoken about it before, but Dean, it really was a great strike. Uh, it was a fantastic strike, and, and Chappie had that um, ability to do that. Um, it, uh, a, a normal flick from Ricky on the inside and a really, really clever run from Chappie, actually, where you thought potentially he would go wide and make a run wide. He saw the space inside, got onto the uh, knockdown from Ricky, great touch with it, with his fire and, and just struck it so sweet. And that was one of Chappie's strengths, you know, making them runs into the box and attacking midfield player, forward thinking midfield player. Uh, and it was a great finish. I mean, you're never going to say that. And the scenes, obviously, with the fans celebrating, we were in League One at the time. Um, obviously, Manchester United had a top, top team. I think Giggs played that day. I think Paul Scholes played that day. Um, so, yeah, great start by Chapion. Um, I can't believe he's only 36 now you've said that. But, it's, um, yeah, it's a great strike with so much power. Um, unfortunately, lost on the day. But, yeah, um, and I was injured. I remember watching that from the, the stands that day, actually, in the, and celebrating as a fan. So, yeah, great day. Great stuff. Well, let's look back at tonight's game. And uh, Dean, we obviously saw there's a couple of youngsters in the starting lineup. Playing at Old Trafford is going to be a massive experience for them. And you touched on it a little earlier, but how important is it for the senior players in the squad to help them through this? It is. It's massive for the senior players. Um, and it would be something that they need to take upon themselves to take that responsibility to, to communicate with the younger players, to just kind of help guide them through the match constantly talking to them, giving them positive feedback, um, just just constantly just being being there for them. Um, and just, you know, before the game, making sure that they prepare as normal, encouraging the younger players to play their normal game. Don't try and do anything different. Don't try and do anything special. They've got their opportunity. They're playing in the team because of the way they've played previously, the way they've trained previously. So it's just encouraging that. Um, but the older players do need to take responsibility. They're going to have to put some big performances in tonight and, and lead by example. You know, if, if I'm an experienced player, I've got to think, OK, what's the best way for this player to feel relaxed, to, to, to cherish his opportunity is for me to perform. If I perform well, it gives a younger player a better chance of performing well um, and taking his chance. So, yeah, the younger players and there's some real experience in in the team, you know, James Ward Prowse is still young, but very, very experienced. You know, Stuart Armstrong experienced, Danny Ings experienced. So communication is key. It really is to the younger players and just encouraging to, to enjoy it as well. Play with a smile on their face. They're playing at Old Trafford against Manchester United in the Premier League. You know, what an experience. So, yeah, big role for the, the more experienced players today. Well, Wiz, I think it's fair to say that Manchester United are the favourites going into this one. But does that somewhat take off the pressure for these young players going in? I know what you mean, and I, I, I certainly hope so. I think the lack of crowd helps as well. That, um, but they're they're still going to be nervous, and uh, and there is always this um, concern when a young player makes his debut that he might be feeling a lot of fear. I must, I must perform, otherwise, you know, this could be my only chance. And I think we saw a little bit the look on James. Um, on uh, Vokin's face the other day when his number went up against Arsenal, wasn't it? And he looked a little bit crushed that uh, his first opportunity for a long time and it, uh, and it hadn't ended all that brilliantly. I think on the other side of the coin, though, 
the trust and faith and confidence that Ralph gives his, all of his players, but especially the young players, the fact that he gives them these, these po positive mindset and the idea that it's not a one-off. You are training with the first team and you have been for many weeks and months to get to know these guys because he sees them as a big part of the club's future. He totally buys into the academy idea and, and promoting from within. So I think that is the key in, in taking some of the pressure off uh, today. And, and like Dean said, for Alex playing alongside James Ward-Prowse tonight, for, for Kane alongside Jan Bednarek, they are, they are two massive players in, in this team. Jan Bednarek leads that defence. James Ward-Prowse leads everything in that team. So they are going to be crucial and, and a huge help to the to them all and 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 the fact that I think at other clubs if there was a big injury crisis a youngster might come in having not really spent any time with these first team players the fact that these guys have been have been training with the first team for for many months they've been in the same uh changing room environments and all that until covid kicked in perhaps but you know these are all things that will help them settle down and they can go through their own normal routines before going out onto that pitch and uh and certainly not feeling the nerves that perhaps other young players at other clubs might feel. Yeah, well, the pressure might be off the youngsters, but it might be turned towards the officials because as fate would have it, the VAR referee from Saturday, Mike Dean, is the referee from uh, for tonight's game. Uh, Dean, we spoke about some questionable decisions uh, the other night. Um, how does that appointment sit with you? And do you think there's going to be any words said? <laughs> Uh, well, the appointment, there's not a lot you can do about that. That's just the nature of the game. But will there be some words said? 100%. I hope so as well. So, you know, just some polite um, conversation, uh, polite reminders that uh, potentially he owes us a couple of decisions. Um, and that will be welcome tonight because well, obviously they're up against it, against a good Manchester United team. Um, and I think that, you know, he would have looked at his decisions, reflected on it and think, I've potentially got one, maybe two of them wrong there. Um, and that will be playing on his mind because, like all of us, we, you know, we're humans, we make mistakes, um, but it could influence some of his decisions tonight. So if I was playing, I'd probably only be reminding him every 30 seconds, something like that, that he owes us a decision. Everything that goes against us, I'd be in his ear. I'd be constantly talking to him during the game. And hopefully that would influence enough um, to give us a decision, uh, not send me off, but give, give a decision um, uh, towards Southampton. So, yeah, it could potentially... Um, be a positive for, for the club tonight. Well, Dean, sticking with you then uh, and looking at Manchester United, Luke Shaw is a player in fine form at the moment. Of course, he's a Southampton Academy graduate. Did you have any experience playing alongside him or, or training with him? And what have you made of what he's achieved in his career so far? Yeah, Luke came, I think we were in the, it was the championship year. Um, the year we got promoted, Luke started training with the first team, same, same sort of time as James Ward-Prowse. Um, I remember the first time he walked into the dressing room because um, the younger players, they didn't just come across to, to train with the first team and you'd see them on the pitch. They would come across um, to the dressing room probably half an hour, 40 minutes before training just to get speaking to the players, try and help them feel relaxed. He didn't say a word, just sat in the corner and um, kept himself to himself. Obviously a young kid, I think he was 16 at the time. Um, and then he tr first training session, we played a practice game. And I just remember him picking a ball up from left back, taking about four or five players on, crossing the ball. And I can't think who scored, but someone scored. And just thinking, OK, this, this kid's got something. This is a, this is a talented player. Um, and the only time I actually played with him was, I think it was my last game for Southampton. Uh, we were the, the Premiership year, we played away at Stevenage in the Cup and he played. Um, and again, impressed. Really, really good player. Just so composed, just so relaxed. Um, I don't think he actually... There's a difference between him playing at Old Trafford or playing on the part of his friends, and that's a, a huge quality to have. Um, and he's had a good career. You know, the injuries have, have been difficult for him. When he got into that rhythm and he was playing up under Pochettino at Southampton, he was playing so well with such confidence and such freedom. Went to United and it's kind of been hit and miss for him. I think he's played under a couple of managers that haven't quite been suited to him. I think he needs an arm around him. I think he needs to be loved. But the form he's shown lately to come back from them injuries he's had as well has been fantastic. And I think we're just starting to see the player that we all saw when he was younger, a player that drives forward with the ball. Um, he's very, very creative. Um, and, and started to be brave again with his defending because, you know, the, the, the leg break he had, it's only natural for him to 
to wince maybe every time he goes in for a tackle. So credit to him. But yeah, I think he's had a good career so far, but I think it could push on even further now. Yeah, he has been hampered by injuries. But Paul, what have you made of Luke's career since he left Southampton? It was impossible not to like what he did for Southampton. And then we've sort of been waiting for this moment, haven't we? A big revival this season. And as an England fan as well, that I'm delighted to see it. He's... um, He's, he's helped out hugely at the back. Uh, United have kept clean sheets against some big teams this season. Liverpool, Arsenal, all of the big teams, really. Chelsea and, and Man City, too, on Saturday against Arsenal. He he initially kept uh, Gabriel Martinelli very quiet. He was forced off at half-time. And then second half, it was Pepe and Willian. Neither of them really got much of a kick up against him either. And he created two of United's very best chances, uh, Marcus Rashford in the first half and then a Cavani, who was, who was very off-colour that game, but um, but he was he was very, very involved at both ends of the pitch. And I remember he said after the game then that, you know, this is surely the most pr- uh, consistent, sustained run of form that he's in, enjo- enjoyed. And after, like Dean said, it, it was so stop-start with injuries and with managers that didn't, um, fancy him for whatever reason. Now, though, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer seems to be getting the very best out of him. He said this week that Shaw's mentality has changed, that uh, it's perhaps coincided with him becoming a father, but also he um, he's not thinking about the injuries that hampered him and that horrible leg break that Dean mentioned as well. So um, I think it also helps that he's got real competition in Brandon Williams and Alex Tellez behind him as well. But you know, he is he is very, very considered. He's surely up there in uh, England thinking once again. And uh, yeah, just hope he has an off night tonight, though. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, well, for the final time this evening on Saints Live, we're going to take a look at what you guys are saying at home on social media. Uh, lots of score predictions coming in. Uh, Adrian's going for a 3-1 Saints win tonight. He says up the Saints. Uh, Christopher, hello to you. Uh, he says he's excited by the new signing Minamino. I uh, hope we keep Walcott too. Um, we've got another comment here. What a goal from Charlie. Uh, yeah, if you're just joining us, we did look back at a famous Manchester United win. Um, or goal from Charlie rather he said always like Charlie didn't get the rub of the green really um, another comment then I like the youngsters I think they'll impress today for Saints and I'm going for a 3-1 Saints win lots of love heart emojis uh, Stephen says we always play very well when playing the top six sides so he's hoping for big things and thinks it'll be a good night for Adams tonight his time to shine um, we've got another comment here uh, greetings from Austria come on Saints send the red devils down um, Uh, And of all the fantastic talking points and comments we've had this evening, I think I'd like to end on this one. Steve did reveal that uh, he shares a barber with James Ward-Prowse and Pavel on YouTube has said, Steve, you've got a top barnet, mate. Uh, Love that one. (laughs) Thank Uh, you, Pavel. Plenty of love, Steve. (laughs) Um, Well, Dean, we'll come to you first. Um, Plenty of score predictions coming in to us on social media, but how do you see this one going tonight? I think it's going to be a tough game. It, it really is. Uh, I think Manchester United are, um, are going to be up for the game because their performances of late have been a little bit inconsistent, especially the last two games. And obviously losing to Sheffield United, they won't want a repeat of that. Um, and it needs some big performances by the Southampton players, you know, the experienced players and hopefully the younger players come in and bring that energy and that vibrance and that enthusiasm. Um, but I think it's, Southampton are going to have to defend well tonight as a team. And when they get opportunities, which I don't think they're going to get many, they need to take them. Um, So I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. um, But I think it's going to be tough and it's going to need some really, really top performances by the more experienced players. Yeah, Belvis, it is uh, undoubtedly going to be a tough encounter this evening. Uh, How do you predict this one going? I think if you look at other meetings with the traditional big six this season, take Spurs out of it, that was a... An anomaly. Chelsea was a bit of a basketball match. I don't think it's going to be like that. But City, Arsenal and Liverpool, sort of 1-0, 1-0. I think it's going to be a kind of a cagey affair like that, where Southampton will all be working furiously hard, putting United under pressure as they do every team. But And I think one goal will nick it. I'm not going to go for, you know, a 3-1 like a couple of the um, the viewers did there. But uh but yeah, let's be more optimistic. I, I think 1-0. I think we're going to get a new Dusan Tadic, Charlie Austin moment. Someone nicking it perhaps late on 
the opposite to what happened against Liverpool when it was uh, right early in the game. But yeah, let's let's have a Shea Adams nicking it late on. There we go. Great stuff. Well, thank you very much, Dean and Paul. And Southampton will be looking to get back on track with another positive result against Manchester United at Old Trafford. Do join us after the game for the final whistle, where we'll all be back to talk about the major points from the match. Enjoy the game and we'll see you then.